thank you so much for being here. And I know why you're here. You're here for the same reason I'm here. Because we love our kids, and we love our city, we love our school system. And I'm going to talk to you. Listen, nor I, y'all know I'll stand up here. Somebody asked me before I came up here, are you nervous? Crap, no. I love this kind of stuff. I mean, I, this is, I love this stuff. I've been doing it for 30 years. I love getting up and talking about our kids and talking about our school system. I mean, my whole adult life. Uh, I've done this since I was 23 years old. So I, I, I love getting up here and talking about it. And I promise you, I can take one slide, and, and y'all know I'm telling the truth. I can talk an hour on one slide. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be respectful of your time, and I'm going to try to, I'm not rushing through it, but I'm going to try to get to the point. And so I didn't put any. Not that I ever do purposefully, but I didn't put a lot of things in here that I could have talked about for, for hours. But I am going to talk about a couple of things. And, and, I want to, and, and the bottom line is I'm going to tell you where we're at with growth. You know we're growing, but I'm going to tell you where we're at. I'm going to give you real numbers as of Friday. Now, they're two days old, which means that may, they may be off. And I'm not kidding you. We grew 17 students last week. And so... Uh, two days maybe we may be off, but we're not going to be off by much. I'm going to give you real numbers, and I'm going to tell you what it's going to take for us to remain one of America's best. And I don't mean this arrogantly. I hope you don't take it. If you know me, I hope you don't take it that way. But I know the answers, guys. I know the answers, and I'm going to tell them to you. Now, I know it might be up for debate where we put this school or where we put this school. That, that's all up for debate. The other things I'm going to talk to you about are not up for debate. <laughs> I'm just telling the facts here. And so I'm going to get right to it. And I'm going to start out, brag for just, can't help but brag on the kids for just a little bit. So proud of them. I can talk about athletics and arts, but right now I'm just going to talk about academics. One thing that, that uh, in, in the school system that we want to excel, we want to excel, excel in academics, we want to excel in, excel in the arts, we want to excel in athletics. I'm so proud of our kids because they do it, every one of those things. But I'm going to point out athletic, excuse me, not athletic, academic things right now, just for a second. And I just want to show you because these things are so important. Number one, Bob Jones and James Clements were the number one schools tied for the most National American Semifinals in the state. Well, what is, what's the National American Semifinals? Well, it's important to us because these are the top kids in America, the top one half of 1%. And we had the most in the state of Alabama. We had the most as a system, no matter the size. And James Clinton's and Bob Jones were tied at number one. I mean, it don't get any better. They both had 15. These are the kids that are the 35 and 36 ACT kids. And I'm very proud of that. Now, I will tell you, we've got, in, in high school, we've got uh, 4,000 kids. I love every one of them. I can assure you, and I don't mean this bad, my wife will get mad at me, no, she won't get mad at me, because you know I'm telling the truth. My kids weren't National Mary Center class, and a lot of kids are not. But I am proud of them. And so I'm going to start with just a second by saying we've got the smartest of the smart kids right here in this town. And we've got 4,000 great high school kids, 11,000 great kids all, uh, all around. All schools, every single school received an A on the state report card. I'm very proud of that. Guys, that's not easy. There are only, there's 137 districts in the state. Only six of the 137 got an A at every school. We were one of the six. Last year it was only two. This year it was six. We were the largest district to get all the A's at every school by double. Think about that. We were the largest district to get all the A's by double. It's not easy when you have to replicate it 11 times. Y'all, follow me, guys. Some schools are replicating it three times, elementary, middle, and high. Most of them did that. We replicated it 11 times. I'm very proud of that. You ought to be proud of that. That's a big deal. It's hard to do. Mitch ranked Madison City Schools, every one of them. That's a, that's a ranking. Ranked every one. Bob Jones and James Clemens both ranked in the top five. Over 400 high schools in the state of Alabama. Your two high schools both were in the top five. It's pretty good, guys. No, that's not pretty good. That's great. Discovery and Liberty. 
300 plus middle schools in the state. Both of them top five. That's great. Every elementary school, we've got seven elementary schools, over 700 elementary schools in the state, all of them are in the top 20. Guys, that's awesome. You ought to be proud of your kids. You ought to be proud of the teachers, uh, uh, the principals of every school. They are killing themselves to do that. And I'm going to tell you what you ought to be proud of is the Dagnum Board of Education because they got a lot of courage. And I'm telling you, I'm cranked up tonight, and I'm sorry. But I am proud of the Board of Education that they've got courage. There's, no, there's not a superintendent or a board in the state that, that don't want to be the best. There's not one of the 137 districts that say, yeah, we're okay with being number 72. We're cool with it. Every one of them that says they want to be the best, but not many of them have the courage to try to be the best. And it takes courage to make decisions to rezone, to keep every school great. It takes courage to do those things. It takes courage to spend money to say, we're going to do this. We're going to add more SROs. We're going to add more math classes. And we'll talk about things like that. It takes courage to do those things because everybody will always agree. But it takes courage. And I'm very proud of this Board of Education. I'm proud of everybody in this district. And let me tell you, I'm proud of you too, moms and daddies, because we've got the best moms and daddies in the state who have produced the best kids. Great kids don't just happen. Happen because you're doing a great job. So I'm glad. I'm glad, I'm glad you're on my team. I'm glad I'm on your team. Let's talk for just a second about our academic accomplishments and what we have added this year. Let's look at what we've added this year. I'm just going to spend a minute on this because I think you know this, but this is, guys, this is big time. I mean, there's no other way for me to say that. We added advanced academic resource teachers in fifth grade. What does that mean? We added advanced math teachers. We got, we went, as a, as a high school person for 27 years, I was not in the elementary schools, not much, but when I became, when I became assistant superintendent, I was in schools every day, every, every school. And I was in my school when I was in, in the secondary schools, but I was in every school. And the thing that I noticed the most was the huge gap in every classroom. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. That was a huge gap. Some kids were maybe struggling. Some kids were National Marriage Center finalists. They're all in the same class. It's not that way in the high school. In the high school, you have three levels. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's not being critical of any level. There are three levels. Some kids are just a lot better at math. Some kids are better at English. Some kids may struggle in science. And we've got different levels. Uh, regular honors and advanced placement. In elementary school, you've got that far of a gap between the top and the bottom. I really believe, I have elementary teachers that are in there, I don't know how you do it. Us high school teachers didn't have to, we didn't have those challenges like that. We had gaps, but the gap would be here or here or here, not here to here. And so one thing that I would work with, and I went to obviously our, 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 our elementary people, was to say, what can we do with this? And, and we took some high school, we did some, we did some traveling first, we took a group to Virginia, we went up and down the East Coast, and we looked at really high achieving schools to say, how do you address this? And we see, and we hired teachers to take the highest level of kids in math, and, and our plan is to do it in English as time goes on, maybe do it in other things, but we started with math, and we did it in fifth grade. You're going to see that our goal next year is to put it in fourth and third grade, and we're going to make a huge difference in all the kids' lives because not just the top, but kids that may struggle. Now they can get more focused instruction versus having these huge gaps. <coughs> Going on, we added Spanish uh, in the fourth grade. One of, one of the goals, my goals and the board's goals, was we want every child to be bilingual, fluent in a second language by the time they graduate, James Clemens or Bob Jones. So we added Spanish to the fourth grade. Next year we're going to add it to the fifth grade and we're going to have it all the way from K to 12. We added the, the gifted services. Uh, we added, this year, we added French, Mandarin, Chinese, Latin, and German for the sixth grade and the seventh grade. Guys, where else in America can your child take these things in, in the sixth grade? I, and we know that the world's getting smaller and smaller, especially all of you that, that are, that are Many of you are, are, are travelers. The world's getting smaller and smaller. If we want our kids to be globally competitive, they better be able to communicate. 
And that's why we're doing it. Well, let me go back. I got it. We add the seal of bioliteracy, which I just explained that to you. We continue to have internships. If any of you are, if your children in the, in the secondary schools, you know that we have internships in, in biomedical and health sciences. You can walk out of, of James Clemens or Bob Jones and have your pharmacy tech degree and make $25 an hour the day you walk out of James Clemens. And I think you have to be 18, actually, to get it at 18 years old. Tell me where you can do that in America. Tell me where kids have a better opportunity than in Madison, Alabama. I'm telling you, it's not there. I'm just, and, and, and our kids are taking full advantage of it. We have internships in architecture. Some of these plans that I'm going to show you in just a minute, a kid came in. I thought, I know that kid. He walked in with our architect. And I said, I know you. He said, yeah, Mr. Parker, I go to Bob Jones. You know who I am. He's interning. He's the one that drew the plans. I mean, that's pretty impressive. It's one of our Bob Jones kids. Uh, I'm going to touch on the bottom in just a second. If you could go into any elementary school in this district, I don't know what the percentage is, but you'd be shocked at the percentage of kids that are school teachers in this district that are Madison City School graduates. You'd be shocked. How many kids go off and become teachers and they want to come back and teach here? You'd be shocked how many do that. And we, we start that in high school. We start developing our own great teaching staff in high school. We have teaching internships. And we have a number of students that go out and, into the classrooms and teach. It's a wonderful internship program that we developed about 10 years ago. So, what are we going to add to the future? We're going to add, we, we're going to add art and music. We want to add art and music to pre-K. We think that's important. I'm, I'm, listen, I tell too, way too much. I get told that all the time. I'm not an art and music guy. I love, I'm, I'm not, but I love art and music. I love, I, I, I can't do any of it. I'm not, I, I can't draw a stick man and I can play no music. I got, I was the first person to be removed in Glen Oaks Elementary uh, uh, history from the flute phone band in the fourth grade. They removed me. That's a true story. My mom will tell it and they made me be the teacher's helper. I had to go to it. That's the truth. I was so bad at it. That's a true story. And, and I was a teacher's helper, and I ran errands. And, and so when the flute phone band did a did the, the was on the stage in the cafeteria, and I went and I was sitting in the audience. My mama said, "What's up with this?" I said, "I was a teacher's helper." And and so I had to I had to, I was a techie. I'm not an art and music guy, but I watched art and music transform <coughs> Bob Jones High School. This was before James Clemens. I watched it transform Bob Jones High School into a different place when we when the arts became important. I am a firm believer that the arts is so important to all of our kids. Uh, we want to offer art music all year long to our kids. And we're going to find options too. Because there's some kids that just may not want to do it. But we want to offer it to kids if they want it. Uh, we're going to provide additional math opportunities to third and fourth graders. I don't know that we'll go down past the third grade. I don't have time to do a lot of explaining right now, but you elementary people know that K2 is real foundational, but in grade three, we want to give them some, we want to give additional math opportunities to kids that are strong in math or, or, or want to explore math. And we're going to continue to offer, uh, we're going to offer foreign language in fifth grade, and it will cover all the way through K12. Future is secondary. These are the things we're adding. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I'm going to tell you, we're going to add, uh, just like you can see, all those languages and Spanish level two to the seventh and eighth grade this year. The green architecture code space. I'm very proud of the one on the right. Let me touch on that one real quick. We're going to do a dual enroll class with UAH. Very thankful for our former board president, Dr. Terry Johnson, who is out here tonight. I, I saw her when I came in. Dr. Johnson has helped us, and we're going to do a dual. Our eighth graders are going to be able to dual enroll and get college credit. Where else can you do that? Not many places. I'm very proud of that. Continuing on, uh, you can look at a lot of the classes that we're adding, classes that we have. Uh, we're doing blended classes. If any of you have students in college, you know that there are a lot of blended classes, a lot of online classes. We're preparing our kids. If we're sending 88% of them to college, we are preparing our kids <coughs> for what they're going to do. 
And, and again, I've, I've talked about those things. I could spend the entire presentation on those things, but that's not why I'm here tonight. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on. I told you last year, one year ago, I don't know if it's tonight, but one year ago tonight, I told you that safety and security, when I became superintendent in 2017, I'm just telling you, I, I worry. I'm a worrier. Um, I worry about our kids. I'm, I'm a worrier. My wife will tell you I'm a worrier. I can't sleep if I think it's going to spit snow, and I can't. Uh, I, I do, I'm a worrier, and I worry uh, if I'm with them. This, this is irrational, and I understand that. If I'm with them, I think I can protect all 2,000 of them. When I was a principal, I had zero fear. But when I'm not in the building with them, and I, know, I, have, I have tremendous worry all the time. And so one thing I went to the board with and said we, is we've got to we add, a, add SROs. We've got to work with our safety plan. And so uh, one thing that we, we did, and I'll start at the bottom, is we employed a coordinator of safety and security. He's here, he's here tonight, Dr. Dave West. I don't see him, but I know he's here because I saw him earlier. There he is, Dr. West is here, and he's doing an outstanding job. We got him on board the 1st of February. He is overseeing this. And his eyes are on it. Nothing else. His eyes are on that all the time. Mr. Terrell and I pay attention to it, but we also pay attention to the math class. We pay attention to the football coach opening. They're really not an opening, but you get my point. The, we pay attention to, we, we have to pay attention to everything. I want somebody that can do nothing but that. Pay attention to our kids. We had mental health counselors. This year we have a mental health counselor at every school. I think you all know that is uh, it's a different world. It's a different world than it was five years ago. But it's a different world. We had a mental health counselor at every school. We're going to continue to add to that if needed. Uh, uh, we added guidance counselors where needed. Uh, as, as, as the population has changed, we've added guidance counselors. Uh, we've added SROs. Uh, we, uh, we've had two SROs that have gone on to one private sector, and uh, I'm not sure, uh, I think both the private sector. Uh, we we're replacing both of those SROs at the, uh, in March. Uh, Chief Jernigan, our chief is here, I don't, I don't know exactly where he's at. Chief Jernigan, our, our, our police chief, uh, there's not a better man in the world, and I'm going to tell you, he shakes shake his hand <coughs> in all mind. He helps us tremendously, and uh, Chief Jernigan is... Uh, 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 we're replacing the two SROs that are that have left us. We're adding two more uh, in August, so we're continuing to grow to get deeper and deeper coverage. It makes me feel good to know that we've got our trained Madison people with our kids. It makes me feel good. <clears throat> you know that we added on to Liberty and Discovery. Um, Six million ish dollars uh, 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 to add uh, 500 seats, if I remember correctly, at, at, at Discovery. I mean, at Liberty, at Discovery, we already had the room, but we, we had to make the, the, the cafeteria bigger. You're going to see our numbers. We are continuing to grow in both schools. Uh, I'll get to that in just a minute. But we are we're growing. We are. We're full. That's okay. I'm, I'm glad people want to come here. But just some pictures. If you've been to either one of the schools, you'd be very proud of, of what's happening. On time and on the budget, by the way. So here's our challenge. Here's why we're here. I want you to see this, guys. Here's what we have grown this year. If you start right here, This is the last six years, how much we've grown each year. Now, we grew a lot in 2014. We grew 178 kids. That's, that's significant. That, that's significant. <coughs> 2015, we grew 163. That's significant. That's a lot of kids. 2016, 233 went up. That's significant. 2017, that's why I became superintendent. I'm taking credit for it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we grew three, all of a sudden jumped away of 372. Last year, 315. This year, in the words of a seventh grader, dango. I don't know what that means. Y'all ever heard him say that? It's not dang, it's dango. 567, guys. 
That's a lot. We grow 567 kids. And I don't know, they know, I don't know what else to say. That's bigger than three of our existing elementary schools. That's bigger than West Madison. That's bigger than Rainbow. That's bigger than, than Madison Elementary. That's significant. I want you to see where we grew. In pre-K this year, we grew 40. Elementary. Look at that one now. We grew 333 elementary school kids alone. That's a bunch. Middle, we grew 51. High, 143. 567. It's a bunch. This is a little busy. You can look at it, we'll post it. But these are numbers as of last Friday. Again, they, they could have changed a couple, but they, they haven't changed much. I want you to see where we're at. And, and listen, let me show you. I want to show you how many seats we got left. In the high schools, between the two, we got 587 seats left today. You can see the population. 2005 JC, 1808 BJ. <sighs> Discovery, we got 160 seats left. I said something to the principal today. I said, you know, you got 160 left. Her comment was, where? <laughs> really? She said, where? I mean, we don't have anything left. On paper, they got 160 left. <laughs> On paper. At Liberty, they're already, over, they're already over capacity. Architectural capacity was 1,200. We got together, our operations department, Mr. Trail, myself, we up to 1,400. It's not a fire hazard. What we did, we took and said, okay, we can meet in these classrooms, we can meet in labs, we can do all these things. So we can add it. The architectural capacity is 1,200. We're already over capacity. Already. The elementary schools, you can look and see Mill Creek, over full. Columbia, let me give you an example. I'm not going to give you every one of them, but I just want you to have a basis to understand what I'm talking about. At Columbia, we got 101 seats. You may say, man, that's, that is, that's good. We've got 101 seats. But I want you to think about this. At Columbia Elementary School, there's 42 classrooms. Think about this. 42 classrooms. And so that would be an average of two and a half empty seats per classroom. Not much. You see what I'm saying? Now, every, every kid that comes in, we're not going to have two and a half and this one, two and a half and this one. We, we know that. But you get my point. 101 is not much. And I spent a lot of time last year talking about how we'll never get to 100% unless we take, unless we just start taking you, you, and you. You're going to Rainbow. You all live in the same neighborhood, by the way. You, you, and you. Now, you're going to Horizon. You, you, and you are going to go to wherever. Mill Creek. You, you've got to drive over to Heritage. But you all live in the same neighborhood. We're going to have to start picking one person, one person. The next person moves in, we'll send them to wherever the opening is. We don't want to do that. Y'all don't want to do that. That's not, but that's the only way we'll get to 100%. So you can look and see where we're at. And there are 1,400 empty seats today. <coughs> Remember this, though. We grew 567 in a year. If that's the case, we'll be over 100% in everything in two and a half years. We don't know that we'll grow that much, but we can see every year, even going back six years, we've never grown less than 150. So we did a, we, we, we hired one of America's best democracies. <coughs> and very frankly, I don't know, he, he, he went for a 10 year period. We hired a, one of America's best demographers, one of the most well respected demographers in America in 2005. He came in, he gave his numbers, and in 2000, maybe 2006, and in 2016 he came back and he had only missed, by, he had missed by less than 100 kids. He's missed a lot this time. And he didn't miss everywhere, but he really missed that elevator. And so we're going to use his numbers. We're going to use this year's growth, but then I'm going back to his numbers because I'm praying that we don't grow 567 every year. But I'm going back to his numbers. And the truth is, and the board has told me this, and, I, and, and they're right, 
Those numbers are off. But I'm going to give them to you anyway. Because even the numbers that are too low are scary. And there's no other way to say it. Even if I'm, if I'm off, it's still not good. I'm going to show you. And I'm a cry wolf. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. If you think I'm a cry wolf, go to your child's school and walk through it. 21. That's two years and nine months from today. 2021. Two years and nine months. We have 72 seats left to change the launch house. 72. We'll be... 120 kids over capacity at James Cook's. We'll be 62 under. We'll have 62 seats left between Discovery and Liberty. This is two years and nine months, guys. And this is with low numbers. Not what we grew this year. This is with numbers that we don't expect. And we'll have 305. Once again, we're saying that's a lot. We grew 333 in one year. We don't know. So that's where we'll be at 2122. So I want to show you something. And that is this. If we build the new schools, I'm going to talk to you about building new schools in just a minute, but if we build these new schools, this is what we will have even with new schools built. We will have 190 seats if we make West Bass and Pre-K Center. We will fill that up. If, if you, with Pre-K, we either add 18 a year or, or 36 a year. If we add 36 a year, we'll fill up in five years. If we do 36 one year and 18 another year, we'll fill it up in seven years. But I think that will be sufficient for the life of this town. I'll be very frank. And uh, I will share with you why I think that. But I think for the life of this town, even through 2040, I think that West Madison Pre-K Center, if we do that, and that's my proposal, I think that will suffice for the rest of, our, the rest of this town's life. And I think that we won't be in a school if we do not continue to have strong pre-K. I don't believe that. I, or I do believe. I don't believe we'll be there. I do believe that it's not a good thing. If we build a new school, for, we will have 822 empty seats. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I will say this. In the life of our town, we're going to have to build another elementary school even after we build this one in two years. If we build one in two years, we're still going to have to build another one. But my opinion is that will be we won't have to build any more after that because we know that Grow Out is about 80,000 citizens. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. You know, we'll talk to me afterwards, I can tell you. But we're at 50,000 citizens right now. We know what our ratio to population is. If we grow to 80,000, and our city planner has shared that we could grow to 80,000. If we grow to 80,000, we believe that this school that we need to build in two years, plus another one in six or seven years, maybe eight years, will probably suffice for the life of the town. I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm not worried about it. I'm not talking to you about the one in seven or eight years. But I do want you to understand that this is not going to solve the problem. Which, and there's not, it's not a problem. I'll say that either. This is not going to be the end all. If we build a middle school, we believe we'll never need another middle school in the history of this town until one gets too old and tear it down. That might be 2050. It'll be long past it when any of us are, are working the school system. 2040, 2050, they may want to tear down Liberty Discovery. I don't know. I say that. I shouldn't even say that because I'm just talking. But my point is, we're not going to need more seats, we don't think. If we grow to 80,000, we don't think we'll need more seats. But we think that, that's, that that will suffice if we build a more middle school, grades 6 to 8. I'm going to spend a little time on this at the end because we're not going to, right now we're not even addressing the high school situation. I'm going to form a task force, and I do want to know what you think about it. I'll talk more about that at the end of the presentation because I'm going to tell you what our options are again. It's either going to be this or this. Or we might do something. All right. What you been waiting on? Got to build a new middle school. Where do I propose to build it? Let me start by saying this. This is not Board of Education approved. I have spoke to the Board of Ed Well, I've done more spoke to them. We've spent a lot of time talking about it. It is not Board approved. But this is what I'm 
proposing to the board. This is what I'm proposing to our community. And I want to know how you feel about it. When we're done tonight, I'm gonna, we're going to have a link. And I'm going to ask you, what do you think about this? There's a lot of reasons why I'm going to tell you why I'm going to recommend this, why I'm going to propose it to the board. Now, we know we've got to build a middle school. The question now is where, and that's the where is where I'm going to talk about right now. Here's what I'm proposing, that we build a middle school to hold 1,200 students behind the current central office. If you look right there, that's the central office. The, that's the football stadium. We would build it back here. You can see uh, you can see different different angles. at Celtic Drive. Again, that's the central office. That is a 1,200 student middle school. Why do I think? And I want to sum it up in as few of points as I can. Why do I think that's a good place to put it? Number one, we own the land. <laughs> that's true. It's the difference between spending two and Two and a half to three million dollars. We're not spending two and a half to three million dollars. It's our land. I mean, we we, we own it. We we own we own it where we can build on. Second, we've got infrastructure in place. We've got parking. We've got a stadium. First, we would have to turn the stadium. The junior high football team could play at the stadium. And this is the most important thing. I think we can zone it. My recommendation would be. And I've played around with this on is that it would be 50% would go to James Clemens High School, 50% would go to Bob Jones High School. There's three middle schools if we build a third one. One of the middle schools is going to be split. Whether it's Discovery, Liberty, or <coughs> New Middle School, wherever it's built, one's going to be split. If it was built by the central office, half would go to James Clemens, half would go to, to, to uh, Bob Jones. The zoning would look something like this. Again, we don't know exactly. I'm not saying shorter streets going here, so, so I'm not going to say it because I don't know. But about a third of Liberty Middle School would come here. About a third of Discovery Middle School would come here. And then we would fill in both of those schools. All three schools would have about 900 students is the way that, that it would work. Now, I think, again, I'm going to say strongly, I think we can zone it without being extremely disruptive to this town. I think, it's, I think it is the wise decision to put it there. But I want to hear your, what you say. With that said, I'm going to talk about the other option. The other option, and I don't have a plan drawn for that, the other option is to build it in Limestone County. I mean, that, that's, that's it. And, and I don't know where, and I'm not going to tell you that I hadn't thought about it because I have. I'm not going to share it, but I'm going to say it would be in Limestone County. If we build it in Limestone County, here's what we would do. First, let's talk about zoning it. And I'm not telling you exactly how to be zoned because I don't know. But it would be something like this. We would probably take two-thirds of Liberty Middle School and move them to the new school. We would take one-third of Discovery Middle School and put it at Liberty. And Liberty would now be a feeder to Bob Jones and to James Clemens. Somebody's going to have to split it. I don't think that'd be good for Liberty. I do not, I think Liberty has a strong relationship with James Clemens High School, and I don't want to do that. Just very frankly, and that's why I'm proposing to do this. <clears throat> I think by building a new school, I think they could create the idea of doing a split school. I think teachers that went there would embrace that. But I think by splitting Liberty Middle School up, I think it would be tough. I'm just being very frank with you. And so I can see this being a beautiful campus, a 51-acre campus, which would include a football stadium, the central office, a school that fed both sides of town. It has not been beneficial to one and not the other. The school to feed both sides of town have a 51-acre beautiful campus. There's, the city is building an amphitheater back uh, on the back side of the stadium. I can see a beautiful campus. But I want your input. I want your input. Uh, and, uh, and we're going to open up, we're going to open up a link, whether it's tonight or first thing in the morning. I, uh, it, it will be open first early in the morning. And I want your input. I want, you to, I want to know what you think. If you say we don't need another middle school, 
I'll read it, but I'll just exit out because that's not what I mean. I mean that's not that's not what I mean. No, we don't have a choice. If you but I do want to know: Do I like the site? Not like the site? Give me your opinion. Say I love it or I, I hate it. Here's what I think you ought to do. I promise you, I'm going to read every every one that comes to us, and we're going to let you rate it. So that's going to be my recommendation to the board. Uh, or that's my recommendation here is today. I don't want to hear your opinion. I want to finish with this on the middle school. <clears throat> why is it, why am I telling you today, we haven't voted for a tax yet, we don't have any money. So why am I telling you today? The answer is, that right there. Because at 21, we don't have anywhere to put it on. That's why, and if we're going to move in in 21, we've got to make plans. They don't, you don't build, you don't build a 175,000 square foot facility in a week. It don't, it, it, it takes, it will take right at two years from planning to, to the groundwork, to drawings, to building, to be ready to move in. We need a full two years to, with planning, and we need uh, and, and we need to move in in June of 21. That's 20. What's that? 25, 26 months? Not much. So we got to make plans, and that's why I'm telling you today. So I want to know. I want your input. All right. We'll talk to you about elementary school too. You can see we're in the same situation with elementary schools. <clears throat> And I want to say this too. With elementary schools, going back, if we waited until 22, would we survive? We're going to survive, whatever we do. We have 305 seats at best. But let me tell you what I told them to do. I don't think you want me to do this. I don't want to have a major rezone for one year and then rezone again when we get the new school deal. I don't think any of you want me to do that. We can wait. To, if we get if the tax passes, and we're going to talk about that in a second, if the tax passes, my recommendation is we move to get these schools built in 21. If not, we're going to have to do some rezoning. And, and I, I don't want to rezone twice. Um, Y'all know how hard that is, how hard it is on the Board of Education, how hard it is on. I'll get beat up. But me getting beat up is nothing compared to the stress that. You, you'll have if I have to rezone them. And then maybe rezone back the next year. I don't want to do that. And so, if we can, I want to move in to the schools of 21. If we can. If we can't, then we won't. So, let me go to the elementary school. And I want to tell you what my recommendation is for the elementary school. And I want to tell you why. Now, let me tell you why. Number one, you can see where that's at. We own the land beside Kroger's now. We own that land. We own 20 acres there. I believe that building the school on that side, and it took me a long time to believe that, but I believe it's the best reason, the best, best course of action for us. Give me a few minutes to talk to you and tell you why. Number one, and I'm not trying to be cute, we own the land. That's a $2 million check right there. We own the land. <coughs> but it's not a deal breaker if we had to buy land somewhere else. We own the land. Number two, I want to talk to you about zoning. I don't know if any of you live in the West Madison district or not. We're going to make West Madison a pre-K center. If, well, let me just, I'm going to get ahead of us. There's two places to build it. We either build it here or we build it in Limestone County. Again, because there's nowhere else in Madison County to build it. And so it's going to be in Limestone County. Now, Limestone County is not a bad word. I'm just, I'm just telling you, it's going to be in Limestone County. So we're going to build one of two places. If we build it, if we build it here, here's the way I would zone it. Here's the way I would recommend it. Zone it is I would take the entire, the entire West Madison school, most of the West Madison there, I'm sure there, 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 there may be, but 90, the vast majority of West Madison would move into there. We're taking that school, we're moving 
those students, or right in, in 2021, there'll be over 500 students in West Madison. About 75, 50 to 75 of those students live in Limestone County. Those students, I would not send there specifically. I'd, I'd move them back. You know, if, if you're one of those people that, that we rezoned dirt two years ago. We didn't rezone any hat. We rezoned the dirt. And we said, if houses are built on this dirt, you're going to go past two or three schools, but you're going to go to West Mass. And people do that when they bought the homes. I would take those 50 students out and I'd put them back, and they would go to Heritage or, or Mill Creek. But I would take every student that lives around West Madison and I would put them into this new school. That's about 400 kids. Student school would be built for a thousand. You remember, if you need to go to Mill Creek or children go to Mill Creek, it's overcrowded today. It's overcrowded today. <clears throat> we would take some of the Mill Creek population, possibly Columbia, possibly even Horizon, which is, and we would move some of those kids <coughs> there to give all of them relief. And so I can't tell you exactly how we'd zone it. I, I, I don't know, but you get my point. <clears throat> and that's, that's where we get relief in all the schools. What we would do with all of the new homes that are going to Limestone County, they would backfill into Heritage, which, or Mill Creek, which are the two schools that are closest to it. We would backfill them into those schools. Now, here's our other option, is to build it in Limestone County. Let me tell you why I don't know that that's a good idea. Number one, if you're part of the West Madison community, I'm just being very frank with you, there'll be no more West Madison community. We're going to have to take the West Madison kids and send them some to Rainbow. We're going to have to send some to West Madison Elementary. We'll send some possibly to Mill Creek. Some will go to Heritage, depending on where you live in Heritage. Maybe Horizon, we're going, to, we're going to split it up. I mean, there's just no way, there's nowhere to put 400 of them. So the West Madison community will be no more. And, and I, I don't, I'm not being overly dramatic, it's just the truth. So we're going to split West Madison up. <clears throat> we would build a school in Limestone County. We're going to build it in the cotton field. And we're going to leave it about 50% empty. That's what we would do. We would not fill it up again with because all the new homes would go there. And, and I will tell you, and uh, I don't think I'm wrong, but I just, listen, I'm, I just tell it the way I think it is. I want to take care of our citizens today. We're going to build it. And everybody that moves to the city of Madison is one of ours. No matter if you moved here yesterday or if you moved here in 20 years, you're one of mine. But I, want to, I think the right thing to do is to build that school for the citizens that live here today. Not to build it. Build a state-of-the-art new school and leave it 50% open and say, everybody come on and, every, and, and, and you can build next door to your school. And we're going to send the people who live here, we're going to send you four or five miles out. I don't think that's the right thing to do. Now, the citizens of this town may say, you're wrong, Robbie. That is the right thing to do. And, and I will listen to every one of you, I promise. But I don't think it's the right thing to do. And I want to tell you this too. I want you to think about this. And I'm, uh, I'm preaching a little bit now. But I do think I know. I've been in this town a long time, 32 years, 31 years. I've been a teacher the whole time I've been in this town. But I want you all to think about this. Apple rots from the core out. If we don't keep this entire town strong, we're going to be in trouble. If we let this town die and everything we build is on the outskirts, the center of this town is going to die. And when it does, let me tell you, the outskirts aren't going to thrive either. I'm not going to call anything out, but look to our east. I'll leave it to you. You can't, you've got, you cannot let this town, we've got to take care of every child and every bit of this town. I want you to think about that. But I'm going to listen to you. And that's why I recommend, that's why I recommend building a school here. I do think there would be things that we would add. I do think the positives is, I think you could, now, I'm sure the negative will be traffic. Guys, I'm not going to make a recommendation on our children's academic future on traffic. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to make a decision because there's going to be a lot of traffic, so I'm not going to make that decision. I can live with the traffic. There's going to be traffic anywhere in the city of Madison. We can get in from here. 
We can get in from the back. We can get in from a lot of places. Realistically, I would think, in my opinion, what I would recommend if it was tonight, I would have some type of wrought iron fence through here for, for looks and for safety and everything else. Because <clears throat> it is built next to the road. I brought that up to a group today, and they said, well, Wendy's is in the front parking lot of James Hunt's. And so Sonic. So I don't know why you're worried about that. I said, well, I know, but I'm just saying. And uh, so there's something about every school. Like that. <clears throat> so that's my recommendation. I've told you before that I think we should recommission West Pass Elementary School to be our pre-K center. Now let me tell you, I don't want you to be misled to think if we don't recommission West Pass, we're going to have 500 more seats. No, you're going to have 500 kids spread out throughout the district is what you're going to have. You still have got the same amount of seats. You say, but Robbie, don't do pre-K. That's an option. We've got, to do, we've got to do pre-K for special needs children. Right now we've got 75 special needs children that are three or four. You've got to do that. But we don't have to do it for everybody else. We do not. But the board has charged me, and this community has charged me, and saying, how are we going to make this event the best? You tell me, because we're going to keep the pre-K rolling. That is important to our kids, it's important to all our children, to, to have a strong pre-K. All data shows that. Google it tonight. Find, go, in, go and search it yourself. Don't take my word for it. But that's going to be one of the differences. That's going to be one of our cornerstones as we move forward. Take a deep breath. <clears throat> and now we're at the high schools, where I spent my entire adult life at, uh, at, at, at the high school. <clears throat> and here's where we're at. You saw that in 21, we're going to have 72 combined seats. That's not as scary to me as 300 combined seats in elementary school. Because you can float teachers, kids come and go, teachers move around, uh, kids dual enroll. So, that doesn't scare me. 72 does not scare me like 300 because in elementary, if you've got a class, for 20, you've got 10 classes, you can have 10 teachers. That's it. And James Clemens or Bob Jones, if you've got 10 classes, you can have 20 teachers and move them around and dual enroll and do some, you can do some things. So it doesn't worry me as much. But when you do overcrowd schools, <clears throat> you do things like start eating lunch at 10 o'clock. I was a principal, I think, you probably know this. I was principal. I was at Bob Jones for 24 years. I was, in, I was at Discovery Middle School for three years as a principal. 24 of those years, I was at Bob Jones. I was the principal of the last 10. We were the largest school in the state by over 400 kids. The 10 years I was at Bob Jones. We were the largest school in the state. That's why we built James Clemens. We didn't build James Clemens in, an, in anticipation of getting big. We built James Clemens after Bob Jones was the biggest school in the state for 10 years. We had 3,200 kids, 9 to 12. 2,400 of them were in the building with me. It was crowded now, I'm telling you. We flourished, but it was, I'm very proud of that. But it was very crowded. And so, as we get to this point, I want you to see that we're, we're going to be full in 21 at James Clemens and Bob Jones. And we've got two choices told you this before, but I'm telling you again. We can either add 500 seats to James Clemens and Bob Jones, or we can build a new high school. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that, but we are going to create a task force. And we're going to create that task force in the next month, six weeks, maybe two months, I don't know. But we're going to create a task force, and, and I'm going to ask you to let me know what the community wants. I've got a plan, but I want to know what the community wants. Uh, you can see the difference in adding on or building is 18 million or 120 million. And that's a significant difference. The difference, if we add if we add 500 seats, both schools would have a capacity of approximately 2,700 students. Right now, the capacity is 2,200 students. James Clemens right now has 2,000 kids. Bob Jones has 1,808. There's about a 200 student difference. James Clemens has a special needs population. Realistically, are about 100, about 150, 140 student difference because James Clemens has a special needs population that that uh, that feeds from all over the district. 
So there's about 140 students difference. So JC's about 140 students being in the So that's that's our option right there. Are we going to build a new school? Or are we going to add on? I will tell you once again that we had 2,400 students at Bob Jones when I was the principal. We were the largest school in the state for 10 years. We had, a, we had 600 more than BJ's got now, and we have 400 more than JC's got right now. They've actually added on to BJ since I was a principal, so they got more room now. And uh, one thing I want to tell you, and I want you to remember this, I've heard people say, we don't want mega schools. I got news for you guys, we already got them. We've had them, and we already got them. And so what we've got to decide is, do we want three schools of approximately 1,600? Or do we want two schools of, of more? What is that, about 2,400? That's what the community's going to have to decide. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to get to it in a minute, that this property tax increase is not enough to build a new high school. We, we said it from the beginning, and I want you to know again, it is not enough. I'm going to show you what it's enough for. The same thing we've said all along. So I'm going to get back, I'm going to finish with this right here. This is the way I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish by saying that's what Madison is right there. That's what we are. But I'm going to finish by saying, stay there, we've got to find another revenue source. That is hard for me to say, guys. When I became the superintendent, I got in a lot of trouble because I would stand up in front of you and say, we're going to figure it out. That's what I've always said. We're going to figure it out. And the board has said, Bob, I know you say that because you want everybody to, to trust you. But you can't figure it out. There is no figuring it out if there's nowhere to see it. you got to quit saying that. And so it's hard for me not to stand up here and say, We've got to have another revenue source. I am not an asker of money. I'm not asking. But if the tax were raised, I'm starting with myself. I live in Madison. I don't drive from outside of Madison. I live in Madison Ave since 1988. I'm raising my taxes. My sons, both my sons, live in the city of Madison, raising their taxes. That's the only way we're going to stay this right here, guys. We, we can't do it if we outgrow what we got. We've got no work to put in all that is coming. So, what's it going to cost? It's going to cost 12 mils of additional property tax. 10 mils will build a new elementary and a new, high, and a new middle school. Excuse me. One mil is for the high school additions. One mil is for the new instructor programs and safety. And uh, we've already taken, we are working on the, the safety part right now. Uh, but we need a meal to pay for it. The safety cost is $775,000 a year. We don't have that. And so, once again, that's where we came up with 12 meals. Notice, 12 meals does not build as another high school. It's not going to build as another high school. We can't build a high school. But we can add on. And I'm not going to make a recommendation right now. We're going to create a task force. So, what do we... I want your feedback. I've asked you that a couple of times. I've told you that a couple of times. And we're going to put this on. We're going to put this online. And I want you to give me feedback. Do you like the locations? Do you say it's the worst locations I've ever seen in my life? Or have you lost your mind? It's not going to hurt. Well, it may hurt my feelings, but I'll get over it. Uh, tell me what you think. I, I want to know. And uh, I promise you, I hope you know this. I'm going to listen to you. That's why I presented it to you tonight. I'm going to listen to you. Uh, I'll finish by telling this. My, my, uh, my first, I guess my first month as superintendent, I, I think Dorinda's here, Ms. White. Uh, I don't know where, uh, my first month as superintendent, no, I wasn't first month. This is probably three or four months into it. Dorinda White is, was, over, was over student services. And, and we were looking at the calendar. And I was talking to the board about the calendar, and we were looking at different options. And I think, I, I don't know if I said it, I don't know, I'm not, oh, I'm not taking credit. Somebody else said it. Somebody else said it. I'm not taking credit because y'all still be mad at it. And, and we said, they don't do 
really care about a fall break. We'll just, what we'll do is we'll create a calendar and we'll float it out to them and we'll say that the fall break will just be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday and we'll start school a little later and we'll do two or three things. We put it out and said, what do you think about this? We had 500 comments within a day. I'm not kidding. 487 said it's the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life. It was... A, I did not need a committee to figure that out. I, and I got back online as quick as I could and said, uh, hey, God, we're just kidding. We're not really going to do that. We're not going to do that. That's true. And some of y'all remember that. I came back and said, y'all, I realize that's the sorriest idea. That was Dorinda White's idea. It was not my idea. And uh, I think for Dorinda, because I did say I was going to say that. And uh, if this is a terrible idea, I will know it. I don't think it is. And I've told you why I don't think it is. But if you think it's a bad idea, let me know. But if you think it's a good idea, let me know. And if you've got suggestions, let me know. And I, want to, and I, and I promise you, I'll dialogue with you. If you say, do this, I'm, I may say, if we do that, you've got to know this is going to happen. Because I'm telling you, we have, we have poured over this. We've stayed up at night worrying about it. And I still do. And that's my lot, is to worry about it. And, uh, and so I'm going to finish right there and tell you thank you for coming out I love you kids I love y'all so appreciate you and I give you my word I'm going to listen to you let me know what you think let us know what you think about this thing and we're going to move forward and I need you to be I'm asking I'm asking for you I'm asking you to be resolute on we've got to find an additional revenue source if we want to continue to be America's best schools. And so we, we, we uh, when this tax vote goes in front of us, whether it be in the summer or September, we don't know yet what it's going to be. It's all in the legislature right now. Um, I'm asking you to, to, to vote for our kids. I'm voting for our kids. I'm asking you to Thanks, guys, for coming. And uh, if you want to talk to me afterwards, I'll stick around. Thank you very much.